Tada! So you guys are probably wondering why I'm showing you this car. This video is gonna be kind of different, I guess. Um, very straight to the point. Basically, I bought this turd for, um, I wouldn't say for. Uh, basically, I bought the turd a couple of weeks ago. Um, it's a E92 335i N55 car. And it is very, very, very clapped right now. Um, so I saw the car in Marketplace about, like I said, about a couple weeks ago. It was a very good price. Um, and the spec on the car was a very good spec. So it's an M Sport Alpine White, obviously. 335 N55 car with Coral Red interior manual, as you can see. Manual transmission. Uh, the reason why I have it on the lift is because this is the first time actually looking at the car. Um, it does have a lot of shit that's wrong with it, which I'll show you guys in just a bit. These are the parts that were in the trunk. We have a charge pipe, aftermarket, BMS intake, obviously aftermarket. Turbo stock, which is in two pieces. We have a motor mount, and there's a bunch of miscellaneous hardware that I'm gonna have to figure out where it goes. We also have the wastegate here, uh, inlet pipe, outlet pipe that's broken, heat shield, motor mount arm, fan, and the cover. <laughs> and then if we go underneath, we have a full exhaust, unknown brand. It's got resonators on it. Goes to a full straight pipe. So there's that. It does have some Megan Racing springs. Questionable. Never seen Megan Racing springs on the E92 or E9X in general. Then up here, there's H&R sport springs up front again questionable then we have the usual clapness oil leak oil leak thrust arm that's bad radiator is disconnected intercooler looks like it's in really rough shape no front bumper obviously um bad tires up front actually good tires in the rear and certain things that are broken you got oil splatter all over the engine or all over the hood and let me show you the best part no turbo so this is a na na car right now and no motor mount on that side either so this is technically just sitting on the subframe which is awesome so on top we have a red interior which is actually pretty nice, except clapness right here, clapness right here, and clapness right here. The rest of the interior is pretty good shape. The passenger seat is good. The back seats are good. Since this is an M Sport package, you have the M Sport logo here, black headliner, looks in decent shape. It's got a steering wheel cover because the somebody got hungry and ate the steering wheel, I can't really show you right now, but it is pretty bad as far as that goes. Start button is worn out and the shifter itself is worn out, but seems to go in gear. Um, what else? Silver trim all around, which is a nice touch. Uh, overall, the interior is pretty clean. A couple of things that need to be taken care of, like the store, uh, whatever this is called, where you put your nasty hands on tint needs to be redone because it is peeling and uh possibly change the seat i don't know if anybody has a red seat let me know i'll buy it right away because the bolster is worn out this is worn out and this is going to get changed to a uh, double 
um, armrest, whatever it's called. I forgot. And we also need to change the shifter knob because that thing is clapped and the steering wheel. Outside wise, we have LCI, obviously, tail lights. In true fashion, the, mid, the insides are worn. This one's completely clapped. There was a spoiler on here that I took off because it was completely hideous. This tail light, I broke it off because I needed to get in the trunk. So there's that. That would have to get replaced anyways. Rear bumper has a scratch here and there's like a outwards thing sticking out here. So I do have a rear bumper for this car already. So that will have to get swapped. There's a dent right here. There's a dent right here. And then if we go here, we have a dent on a door handle or a scratch. And then there's a dent right here. So that would need to get fixed. Side skirt. There's some messed up things going on on the side skirt. Headlights are in decent shape as far as how clear they are, but one tab broken here, both tabs broken here. So we'll have to fix that. Probably redo the headlights. I don't know, we'll see. Uh, missing a whole entire front bumper because it had an F80 style front bumper, which I hate. Sorry if you have one. So we went ahead and purchased a OEM M Sport front bumper from the person that sold the car to me because they had one. So that will go on the car. The rear bumper will get fixed. All this diarrhea that's on the hood is going to get cleaned off. As far as engine bay goes, I do have the engine brace on right now because I am going to drop the subframe. Engine looks pretty clean. I haven't heard this car run. So I can't tell you if it runs. I know it turns on as far as the battery goes. So there's that classic side marker clapness going on. This one's loose. Oh, not to mention it does have apex wheels. Not my favorite choice, but came with the car. So we're gonna stick with it. Diffuser is in decent shape. Otherwise, everything else is here so this brace was actually off the car had two bolts on it so i just took took it completely off because i am going to drop the subframe like i said so we went ahead and got a new turbo because the turbo that's that was in the trunk was uh, disassembled and i'm not gonna put it back together and take my chances so all the turbo lines are on this turbo so they have to be removed but from what I was told, this turbo is good. So we're going to go ahead and swap this turbo in the car since that one's in pieces and see if the car runs. So I'm going to go ahead and tackle this today. And I'm not going to show you guys the process of installing this turd because it's a long and tedious process. But I will show you guys the first start. And I'm also going to tackle the oil pan gasket because it looks like it's leaking. So all that would be done in the same video. Um, and hopefully we can get the car to start today. And if that's the case, I guess it was a pretty, pretty decent purchase. Um, I don't think I'm gonna keep this car. It's more gonna be like a quick fix and flip type thing. I'm gonna fix everything as far as the exterior goes, engine wise and have somebody else enjoy a six-speed manual N55 E92 with a red interior because I already have an E92 and I don't need another one. So it's probably gonna be a couple of videos on this car. We'll see how it goes. I do have a lot of parts coming for the car already and it's also gonna get wrapped, which I'll show you guys what the color is gonna be, obviously, when I wrap the car front bumper, rear bumper, replacement, fix all the dents on the car, get it all nice and clean and go from there. And also the way you see the car right now is actually not the way the car came. It had a bunch of tree sap and debris. Can't, I guess you can kind of see 
I don't think paint is supposed to feel like sandpaper, but this is actually after washing the car. I got it down to where it looks somewhat decent. It looked terrible before and it's gonna get, now it's gonna get even better than what it is right now. Like all this is gonna be coming off with clay bar and then prepping it for wrap. Tint will get fixed, engine will get fixed, or if it has any engine problems. At that point, I don't know, I might just throw the car away. But let's hope that the engine starts, runs, and it's fine. It just needs probably a couple of sensors, a couple of seals replaced, no big deal. But as long as this engine runs, this would be a win for sure. Progress update. So I took off the oil pan. Um, gasket was bad, obviously. Um, for what it is, I think this engine is in pretty good condition. I don't see any staining as far as like oil changes being done like every 20,000 miles. That's not the oil from the car actually. That's like mix of oils. But inside the oil pan, I didn't really see anything major. It just looks like dirty oil. But for the most part, there's no staining inside. It looks pretty clean. Um, the gasket was bad. I'll show you. It's nice and crispy. Yep. So that was definitely leaking. So we're gonna go ahead and replace that. And uh, I'm gonna go ahead and inspect it one more time. I'll probably take off this uh, oil pickup tube just to see what's behind it, make sure the bearings are not shot or a rod is sitting by itself, you know. Uh, besides that, seems pretty good. I do have to clean up the surface because there is some gasket material left over, so I might have to like sand it down just a little bit with the fine sandpaper, then clean it up, put it back on. As you can tell, I did clean the subframe. The side of the block is also cleaned can't really tell yeah there you go so side of the block is pretty clean now I have to just um, brake clean the top portion probably use like 50,000 cans of brake clean because this thing was covered in oil so all of this will have to get cleaned up new gasket new bolts put it back in and then go ahead and continue with the turbo job that I was originally gonna do so I'll be back got a squiggly line, a squiggly pipe. The squiggly pipe. And then we got an L pipe. So. And we got look. some fluids on your shirt too. Yeah, that's from a, that's bodily fluid from the car. <laughs> so, I had to purchase a new inlet pipe, outlet pipe, because the stuff that was in this trunk of this car, I think the outlet pipe was broken and the inlet pipe looked kind of questionable, so. We're just gonna go ahead and replace it with BRSF. Yes. Good old trusted BRSF. And along with that, we might as well replace the ra uh, radiator. What? Yeah, that's a very nice looking radiator. The intercooler. Does cooling go through there? <laughs> Actually it does, because the, the old intercooler had coolant in it. So I don't know how that happens, but. Good thing I didn't connect it and you know ran the car through. So yeah. that little piece of shit is coming off the car. I'm getting replaced by the, this is a five inch HD, I think. It's yeah, it's a five inch. Yeah, whatever it is, five inch HD. I didn't go for the, you know, the crazy 7.5 cause nowhere in the world this car will make that much power. And that's rated for 550 wheel. Uh, yeah. Yeah, we're never touching that cause. This is an M55E PWG. It's not making that power. Yeah, and it's got a <laughs> it's got a used turbo that I bought from a car that upgraded. So it's basically stock turbo that's full bolt on. So it's barely gonna make 300 horsepower, probably. And if you haven't noticed, the turbo is back on. I don't know if I said that in the previous clip, but it is back on. We have the downpipe on, which is another VRSF piece mm -hmm. connecting to 
whatever unknown exhaust is on this car. And now we're gonna put these two, the intercooler, connect all the coolant lines, and some stuff up top. We also have to put the motor mounts back in, you know, the ones that didn't exist on the car at all. They are just the, placed. Yeah, and the motor was sitting on the subframe. <laughs> so we're gonna put those back on, steering rack, and then listen to our first start of a beautiful N55. Beautiful. This, this guy and this guy, I'm installing it before I put everything in because it's a lot easier and there's more room, especially with this one, I think. This one, not as much. So it has a clip here. This one, you just slide it into the turbo and then there's a, a hardware that goes in here. So it would sit like this in the car. And then the squiggly guy would sit somewhere like this. See, we're showing love for the N55E guys. Exactly, Something we have an N55F. Do. Sexy. Which, don't buy these. It does not work, it's does just not work <laughs> on F chassis cars. This does not work on that. It's only for E. For E. Vehiclevirals.com. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so I have the lower radiator hose disconnected. Uh, expansion tank is still connected. I do have to clean off that caca over there, which I can do later on. But this guy needs to go in there really hard to show yeah because it's black in a dark area yeah but I can see some of it make sure you silicone grease that yeah that's what I did like I said it's kind of hard to get it in there and Giggity. especially when you have things in the way Giggity. Cheers. And also, if you do this and you don't get it all the way in, you might get some air mask codes, which we don't want. And I don't know why it's not going in right now. It's being a pain in the ass. When in doubt, more silicone. <laughs> so. Candy! This is what happens when you buy a used car. Or a car that's like halfway put together. You just get a bunch of hardware, you don't even know where it goes. I know where these go. Trash. <laughs> Trash. As you can see, we have motor mount bolts that were never in the car. Hold on, this is for this car? Yeah, we have a lug nut. <laughs> We got a subframe bolt that goes to the brace. Turbo stud. Don't know what these are, but I needed one of these so I can put the inlet on. Yeah, I don't know. We got some clips. Just sprinkle it on top. More clips. More clips. More clips. More clips. This is actually the turbo. This one's actually gold right here. Yeah, that is gold. Everybody's always missing this one. And this is actually a turbo clamp that, you know, some dipshit decided to take off the turbo in like three pieces to fix a smoking issue. And I'm not referring to the person that I bought this car from. I'm referring to the person that worked on the car that went to the shop that I bought it from. So yeah, they took apart the turbo just to diag it and see if they can fix it. And then they're like, oh shit, we don't know how to put it back together. Yeah. Idiots. All right, let's see if it The alignment's kind of questionable there. So it is new. Yeah. Hello! Sponsored by Snap-on. Alright, we got the squiggly line. We gotta put some lube in there. Make sure you don't pinch the O-ring. Well, actually, better thing to say is make sure you put the O-ring in. 
Did it come with the O-ring or did you swap it in? Nope, it comes with it. Wow. So when it comes, when you open the box, just don't question it. Just put it in. Yeah. Terrible advice. That's not a terrible advice. That's a good advice. Just take a peek. Okay. I cannot see what I'm doing. Yeah, imagine me. So, I'm just shoving things in. Giggity. Oh, there you go. And I shoved it in. So now, we have to put this guy in. What you're gonna do from the top. So from here, I can see the, you can kind of see, I guess, the groove and where it's supposed to line up. Looks pretty in here now. Nikolai.com. How to install AC clip. Step number one. Install it. I think it's on. Looks flush to me. Let's make sure they're squiggly. Yep, squiggly is good. Fucking Honda owners. Okay, so now we can attach the intake on and then also we need to attach the vacuum line for the wastegate which would go onto this solenoid and then we also are missing the O2 sensor plugs here and then there's a heat shield that goes on here so I'm going to go ahead and do that off camera and fix this, um, whatever the fuck's going on here, because it needs to connect to the intake so there's no uh, air leak. And then I'm also gonna do the coolant lines off camera because that's boring shit. Then I'll show you guys the radiator, AKA the intercooler install after. Hulk man. Hulk man. Well, you know what time it is. Hulk oh, man. We're gonna start this thing. By the way, we do sell that intake on our website as well. Down for the win. <laughs> hey, why are you using mine, sir? Mine is dead. So, the intercooler and everything is back on. You shouldn't have a boost leak, you shouldn't have any kind of leaks. But, throwing on a drive train malfunction, so most likely it needs a, a map sensor, which I don't know. Did I plug it in? I don't know. Let me go check.
got a really slow throttle response. Bro, drivetrain drive malfunction. Drivetrain multifunction. <laughs> malfunction. I can hear that sick misfire too. Tell me what to do. Sounds like your F30. Don't disrespect the clapper. M55 just sounds better. It does. Is it better though? I don't know. It about sounds that. better. If it looks like a duck and quacks like a duck, it's probably a duck. Oh my god. Charge pressure, ambient, blah, 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 pressure too low. Okay. Charge pressure, charge pressure, charge pressure. As you can see on the dash, we have no drivetrain malfunction. Uh, reason being is the car had a 3.5 bar map sensor. Which makes no sense because the car is like barely bolt on. So I swapped that out to an OEM two and a half or whatever the fuck it is. No drive chair malfunction. It makes blow off valve noises, so I think it's good. But we have a new surprise, and it's awesome. It's amazing. This makes the car just perfect. Listen. So we're driving perfect. <laughs> uh, I don't know if you heard that. Let me let me demonstrate it again. What is this guy doing? Primo's old man. Almost hit that car, by the way. We're going on the road. <laughs> so, I don't know if it's apparent, but every time I go into second gear, we get a little nice grind. So, I think the trans is fucked. And the reason why I say it's fucked, let me pull the windows up, is because N55 cars are known to have a second gear synchro issue. And it seems to be that we have a second gear synchro issue. Um, actually, I'm not even going to go on the road because there's a lot of caca going on back there. So we're going to back up. We're gonna back up and I'm just gonna throw this car away now because a simple fix as far as the turbo turn into a I gotta drop trans and you know BMW's old fashioned <coughs> way of you know saying fuck you you can't repair this transmission so I had to buy a new transmission which I already sourced and the only reason why I already sourced it is because this clip was shot weeks later because <laughs> I was trying to find a, a transmission so I have a transmission for the car it was not cheap I paid like two thousand dollars for it no likey but you gotta do what you gotta do you like that noise <laughs> So, you could also just go first and then just go to third or go to fourth. I don't know about fourth, but third is like, oh. Wait, uh, did you just say you don't have a fourth? No, I said I don't know about fourth, oh. but you can go to first and then go to third. Because you haven't gotten that far yet. <laughs> yeah, I haven't gone to fourth, I think. No, we have. Yeah, we have. Because we drove it to AutoZone one day. But... At least the motor's not blown. I could say that. 
And the reason why there's like wires hanging and things going on here is because we've been doing some headliner work. And this is just temporary for now. You just put it like this and tada OEM. With the hole? Yes, that's OEM. And here it's missing a door handle now and there's missing a piece here. But that's that's, that's not that's not nothing to worry about. And I don't know if I'm gonna address this door uh, what's it called? Door card? Door card slash armrest. This is definitely gonna get addressed. Because it looks very <laughs> ashy. This I don't know about. I don't know, I don't know about that. I can't find a seat that's like by itself. I gotta buy a whole interior. This will get addressed. The ashiness. Um, steering wheel. Somebody got hungry here and ate it. So that might need to get addressed. But we'll see. We'll see what happens. Maybe I'll just slap on a, another steering wheel. Or I just leave this. What's it called? <laughs> <laughs> and it doesn't go on. Maybe I'll just leave this cover on there. Which covers the caca. But yeah, anyways. Now we gotta swap trans. Uh, but engine wise seems to be fine. So that's a plus. And we kind of went ahead and did some body work on the car already, which I'm not going to show you on this video, obviously, but it's going to be in the next video. Don't know when. So next video, we're going to wrap the car and do some body work and clean the car because I already have bumpers for it and everything for it and fix the trans at some point as well. That's the only time you can put it in second gear? Yep. <laughs> That's it. It goes in gear right now perfectly. See? No grind. Perfect condition. Car's mint. Anyways. Bye.